you're listening to another episode of Retail Shift, business advice for inventory-based brands and the merchants who run them. I'm Chris Gio. I'm the founder of Merchant Method, but most importantly, your retail coach for the next few minutes. Today, we're going to talk about the business confidence and the business clarity of a small business CEO. And really, why it matters, why it matters that you consider yourself the CEO of your business so that you can unlock both the confidence and the clarity to take decisive action. Now, I don't know about you, but I've certainly felt shaky, unclear. So can you raise your hand if you've ever sent a business email and felt sick to your stomach? as soon as you clicked the send button? Will you raise your hand if you've moved through really sticky, ambiguous work situations thinking, what the heck is happening right now? I don't understand. Will you raise your hand if you are ready for life to just lay that dream business on you, the one that you have been working so hard to create and manage and grow? Can you raise your hand if you are waiting for your dream job to appear, the one you actually thought you were getting into when you signed up for small business ownership? If any of these things sound familiar, you are in the right place because today I hope to shed some light on how to increase your entrepreneurial confidence and find business clarity in an uncertain world by teaching you the same level of insight that every small business CEO has. And I hope that you and I can do this in just five days. Yeah, I said it, five days. So that means I'm gonna give you some action steps at the very end of this episode, so I want you to stick around. And before we dive in, let's just imagine for a few seconds what could be possible in one week if you learned how to improve your strategic know-how so that you can lead your business to greater profit. Oh, and by the way, with confidence on one side and clarity on the other. Now, one of the things you have to know is moving forward, rowing, Building a self-sustainable business is not about big sweeping changes. It's about micro improvements, optimizing the beginning, staying committed, small changes, day after day after day. A few weeks ago, I was teaching a class, an amazing, lovely class at Urban Craft of Rising. And every spring, they host a two-day crafters business camp over on Vashon Island. And one of the two classes I taught was titled Ask a Retailer. And I built it as a tell-all expose style workshop where I was sharing the things that retailers really think about, retail buyers really think about when they're looking at current vendors and potentially new vendors. What's going on in their head? how they're managing the buy, and really how to set yourself up as a potential wholesale account in the best possible way. Now, there's so much about that experience that is not in our control, whether you're the retail buyer or whether you're the wholesale account trying to sell. And if we thought really hard about what is actually in our control and what's out of our control, we might have an out-of-body experience. But, and there is a huge B-U-T, when it comes to what we can't control, our job is to remove as much friction as possible so that we're inviting in what we want and we're inviting in opportunities for business success as smoothly as we're able to make that happen. So then, of course, the question is, Well, how do we know when we've removed friction? How do we know when we've shifted from a circumstance over which we have no control 
into a problem for which there could be a potential solution, right? That's the difference. Circumstance, we can't control. A problem, there may be a solution. And the answer really lies in confidence and clarity. So let's dive in and talk about those things really quickly. Confidence measures your level of optimism or your level of pessimism around the prospects of your business. It measures your optimism, your pessimism around how you feel about the reliability of your future. And ultimately, it really boils down to a sense of trust. Do you trust the information you have? Do you trust the information you have well enough to make decisions using that information? Do you trust yourself to execute on your plans? That really is confidence. Clarity refers to your ability to communicate coherently, really about any aspect of your business. Or it's, I like to think of it as a level of transparency in your business and transparency could be internally between you and your leadership partners or you and your entire team. But there's also clarity in the form of transparency between you and your customers, how everyone else sees your brand and how they experience you in relationship to how you want them to experience you. And ultimately, it boils down to articulating your expectations and to promoting performance or or um, I like to think of promoting behavior that meets those expectations. Confidence and clarity. If those two things sound right up your alley, if they sound exactly like what you need in this particular phase of your business, I want to invite you to join me over at Retail Charm School. So Retail Shift, quick podcast, audio lessons. Retail Charm School, about 20 to 30 minute, a little bit more in-depth video training. So if Retail Shift is like level 101 of your retail MBA, then retail charm school is level 201. That's really where we dive into the skill set that helps you unlock the personal confidence and business clarity that leads to retail profit. So all you have to do is go to merchantmethod.com forward slash school. That's merchantmethod.com forward slash school to master the art and science of running an inventory-based business. So thinking through your current level of confidence in all the things that you have that inform the choices that you make and in thinking through and assessing the level of clarity you have for yourself as a leader of your business and the clarity you're able to communicate both inside your company and to your customers. When we, ha- when we think through that, I want you to think really think through what those two things have in common with every small business CEO. Because in fact, I'm going to congratulate you because you are a CEO. And if you've never tried that title on for size, try it on. As a small business CEO, you're in charge of the strategic management of your business. And you're in charge of everyone that works for you, whether you're extremely clear about where you're going or you're able to clarify that direction or whether you're confident that you're making quote unquote the right choice. This is different than being the president or the owner. You you are likely to be both. The role of the president or owner is that you're often the face of your brand, personal brand. And, you know, many of the merchants I know have personal brands, even if their name is not in the name of the business. You hold the steering wheel, even if you don't realize it or even if you don't want it. So to help make the outfit of small business CEO 
feel a little bit more comfortable, I've got a couple of steps for you in the next five days. And here's your, this is the assignment I was talking about. For the next five days, I want you to work on an exercise that is really asking you to vocalize what you see. And you can whisper it to yourself. You can speak it to yourself in your head. But if you're alone, if you're working alone, I want you to vocalize it. I want it to come through your vocal cords and out of your mouth. And what you're going to do is vocalize what you see so that you can develop dynamic vision. So think about being a literal driver behind a literal ceiling, steering wheel. You need a mix of distance vision and near vision. You need depth perception. You need peripheral vision. You need to understand the not only the rules of the road, but the culture of, of street traffic. And you need to be able to read both the actual physical road signs plus the conditions. When we think about steering in a vehicle, there are so many things that are out of our control, but then there are a lot, also a lot of things that we can create solutions around. There's a lot of behavior that we can employ to make this process as easy and as smooth as possible. So what does this look like or what does this sound like in your business? It sounds like you're talking to yourself because you are talking to yourself. It might mean, okay, Chris, if I was talking to myself and doing this activity out loud, Monday through Friday. All right, Chris, now is the time where you are going to plan your priorities for the day. It's time to bust out your paper planner where you planned your 30-day strategic plan. It's time to open your spreadsheet to look at your full year plan. And then it's time to open your Google calendar to make sure that you're extremely clear about where you need to physically be today or who you need to engage with in a time-sensitive way. All these three things, that's going to impact your day. I better plan maybe to take about 20 minutes to figure out what my big priorities are and when I'm actually going to eat and if there's any like self-care or exercise I want to do. That example is a real example. That's how I start all of my mornings with a cup of coffee. And this idea of saying things out loud gives you the opportunity, invites you to review your version of business driving, distance vision, near vision, your depth perception, peripheral vision. Do you understand the rules of engagement? Are you reading the road signs and reading the conditions? And when you do, I promise you, if you do this activity, you will get 10 steps closer to being a more confident and clear CEO, more quickly and more effectively. So that's step one. Commit to it. Put time in your calendar and do this activity. Step two is to honestly and truly join me over at Retail Charm School. If you're still listening to this, you will for sure love Retail Charm School. Again, just go to merchantmethod.com forward slash school for the best seat in class as you master the art and science of merchandising. And as we wrap up today, I want to thank you so much for making the time to listen. I promise you it would not be the same without you. Catch you soon. Bye. 